One last delve into the new features for Darktable 4.4 before we get on to 4.6. Let's go. Hi and welcome to episode 134 of Understanding Darktable. I hope you had a Merry Christmas. We're now in the one week of no man's land in between Christmas and New Year. And although 4.6 is out, and I am running 4.6 on my system right now, uh, there is just one last video that I want to do, and that's this one, uh, with just a couple more things that were new features or updates and tweaks in version 4.4. And the first of those is the histogram buttons. Now if we dive into an image here you will notice that there are now two sets of buttons in the histogram. You've got the four different histogram modes in this series of four buttons in the top left hand corner of the histogram. Uh, so that's the vector scope, the waveform, the parade and the normal histogram view. And then you've got buttons on the right hand side which change depending on which of those four histogram modes you're in. So if you go to vector scope, you've got set view to AZBZ and the linear logarithmic toggle. If we go to the waveform view, we've got the set scope to vertical toggle and then the three color channels. If we go to the RGB parade, we've just got the set it to vertical switch and then if we go back to the histogram you've got the linear logarithmic toggle and then the three color channels. So that's the changes to the histogram. Next up the snapshots module has had a little bit of a tweak. In the release notes it says snapshots are no longer invalidated when the history is compressed or reset. All snapshots are now stored with their full history and can always be correctly reconstructed. Now, just for those of you who are new to Darktable, sadly, Darktable doesn't do snapshots the way most likely the Adobe product that you've just departed from used to do it. Unfortunately, what Darktable does with snapshots is simply create a bitmap screen capture of the state of the image at that moment in time. But it doesn't allow you, should you have then made subsequent changes to the image and then decide, oh, I want to go back to that snapshot, it doesn't let you do that. All it is doing is showing you what the image looked like at that moment in time, but it doesn't let you go back to that moment in time. It is a frustrating oversight, I will grant. It's something I really wish could be introduced to Darktable, but it doesn't work that way. So just to demonstrate, I've got an image here, just an outtake from my Alaska trip. Really haven't done much here other than uh, boost the exposure a little bit. So we will take a snapshot at this current moment in time. And then we'll go and do something like, we'll desaturate it. Now, if I then click on the snapshot that I took, I can see my snapshot on the left and my current history state on the right. And I can drag this bar across between the two to see each of those states and if you are new to the module there's also a little curved arrow in the middle there that allows you to set it to vertical or reverse the orientation or opposite vertical sorry horizontal not vertical and then back to its original state but what i want to show you is that if i then reset the history for this particular image so we go yes we've now got the original raw file on the right hand side, the snapshot as we took it on the left hand side, this used to not be the case. If you reset the history state, then you lost the snapshot. Now, I do find the wording of this, you know, all snapshots are now restored with their full history and can always be correctly reconstructed to be a little misleading because, like I said, no, you cannot get back to that particular point in time. Uh, unless 
something has been changed that I'm unaware of, but to the best of my knowledge, all this does is let you see the state as it was at that moment in time, but not to actually get back to it. Two modules have now been deprecated. They are the levels module and the contrast brightness and saturation module. Now, what this means is that there are newer modules that replace those two modules, which you are encouraged to use for any future editing that you do. But if you have old images that you've already edited and you used these modules, which are now deprecated, and in this particular instance, it's levels and contrast, brightness, saturation, those modules will still be available to you should you wish to revisit those images that you have previously processed using those modules. But for any new image that you process, you will not find the levels and the contrast, brightness, saturation modules available to you because they've been hidden. Now, you can always get back to those deprecated modules, even to use for new images if you really, really want to, by going to the hamburger menu just below the histogram and select that second option, modules deprecated. And that will show you all of the modules that still exist in Darktable, but which are hidden because the code that makes those modules do what they do is not well constructed for various reasons that I won't go into. I've covered it in the previous 130 odd episodes. Just trust me, these things get deprecated for a very good reason and you are encouraged to use the newer versions of the modules. Now, in the case of these two modules, instead of levels, you should be using the RGB levels module. Uh, let me just jump back to modules all and we will go levels and you can see RGB levels. That is what you should use in place of the old levels module and to replace the contrast, brightness and saturation module, you should be using the color balance RGB module, uh, which is that one there. And although it looks complicated, it is a much better module, not only for the, the code underneath it, but just what it'll do for your images. Uh, and I did a fairly extensive video on that particular module some time ago. Have a search on my channel and you'll find it. And finally, default groups. In this hamburger menu item that I, or list that I just referred to, we used to have uh, an entry that said modules default. That has now been removed. And I think from memory, when you first launch Darktable, it will default to workflow scene referred. Now, if again, if you are a new user to Darktable and the term scene referred is new to you, I did a video a while back about display referred versus scene referred. I highly recommend you watch that because it is very, I don't know if important is the right word, but it is a critical thing to understand if you are going to use Darktable because there were a lot of modules that were written using a display referred methodology. And for reasons I don't want to rehash right now, that's not the best way to work. Scene referred is a much better way of working. Again, I covered all this in that video, so go check it out. And a lot of the, a lot of these modules have been uh, deprecated and replaced with newer versions of you know the similar features, but using scene referred methodologies. So that option that was their modules default has now gone, and by default you'll be on workflow scene referred, but you do have these others. To choose from if you want to and if you want to create your own you can go to manage presets and do that and again i did a video on managing presets somewhere back in the dim dark ages well actually not that long ago to be honest probably in the last 20 videos so yeah so those are the last handful of things that i wanted to cover as new features in dark table 4.4 they was a stack of other stuff in the release notes. A lot of it was bug fixes. A lot of it was stuff that was 
really once in a blue moon type stuff that you would almost never encounter and that's why i've not covered everything that's in the release notes i've tried to cherry pick the things that i feel an average user is going to encounter most often or you know on a somewhat regular basis so that will do it for Darktable 4.4. I know that 4.6 came out a week ago because today's the 28th. So yeah, it's been a week today. Uh, and I do plan to now move on to new features for Darktable 4.6. Normally, I'd already have those videos out, but you know that this year has just been a crazy mess for me. So we will get there. By the time 4.8 comes out in June of 2024, I will be back up to speed and chomping at the bit and the new features video will drop pretty much the same day the software does. All right, people, I will leave it there. I trust that you had a Merry Christmas and that you are looking forward to having a, a good New Year's Eve bash in whatever way uh, is suitable to you. Kath and I are just going to go and watch some fireworks locally. And I, I really want to make it a, a bit of a mission for myself in 2024 to try and organize some more shoots with models, uh, come up with some themes and get out and shoot a bit more often, if for no other reason, just so I've got some new images to feature in these videos so that, you know, as I go forward, I'm not constantly you know, going back to stuff that I shot two years ago or five years ago or 10 years ago. <laughs> so anyway, that's my plan. Try and uh, try and get out and do a few more shoots. Um, yeah, just for fun. All right, that'll do it. And I will, uh, yeah, see you in the next one.